morning. Thank you, for Kurish, for putting this very interesting program together. I was asked to speak on Practo <coughs> search engine optimization and Google ratings. Are they worth it in your practice? Now, it's very important to find the right match for your practice. If you, depending on which city are you practicing, what are your expected clientele, depending on that, you have to plan marketing. That is extremely important. Otherwise, you'll be spending money without getting optimal returns. We're all in Mumbai now. If I want to eat out, I can ask Kuresh what are the best restaurants in the city. He will tell me. But short of that, I won't bother him because he's so busy. I would search on the website, right? I'd go to Zomato and look for the best restaurant to eat. Similarly, if you have, a, if you live in a city with 10 million population, how will they look for you? They will go to a website. That's what, if you even want to buy a refrigerator, you go to the website and look for a particular model that will suit your home, right? So similarly, a, a potential patient will look for you and you have to be visible, you have to be out there. Otherwise, you have to depend on a very organic growth, patient to patient growth. So one happy patient brings in maybe five, but that is over a period of time, not immediately, isn't it? My patients of thyroid ophthalmopathy will send me a patient after 10, 15 years. So you'll have to wait so long, but if you want to grow rapidly, then you have to be out there. So you look for a website and use Easy Diner to book because you get discounts on the bill, 10%, 20%, you get cash back. So you have, you do all this when you want to dine out, you do all this when you want to buy a gadget, but why do you expect that your patient will not do it? Your patient will definitely be doing it and he or she is doing it all the time. We miss that. Practo is exactly that. I'm not advertising for Practo, but it's a facility that is out there. They are a business. They take money from you and they also make sure that you get patients. If you're registered on Practo, you have several advantages. When people, you know, don't want to do a very generic search for an ophthalmologist on Google, they go to Practo because Practo is branded website and somebody as credible as Rahul Dravid is advertising for Practo. So they have a branding right there. So people go to Practo, look for a retina specialist in Mumbai, they get one, right? So that is one good way of, you know, very informally advertising. When I look for who all is working in Mumbai today, I look for an ophthalmologist, eye surgeon in Mumbai today who can see me today. I got 50 doctors, although the conference is still running, mm -hmm. right? So 50 of them are working and they're ready to give an appointment at this point in time. So people can go to Practo and look for an ophthalmologist and they have 24 by 7 instant booking, just like you book your tickets on, uh, uh, what is that, book my show or uh, make my trip. If you book, like book your air tickets, you have slots available on each day. It can show how many slots are available and at what point in time you can book your slots online. So if you're out there, your patients can book your appointment slots online. This is, this is beyond what you have booked already by your telephonic appointments. So you'll have an additional number of clientele that are floating into your clinic every day. Now going to a different as aspect that is called search engine optimization. I think it was also already being alluded to. What is SEO or search engine optimization? When you search on Google, you get a bunch of results. But you want your institution or organization or a clinic to be out there, then you have to optimize the search, uh, what do you call, algorithm. So how do you do that? You can't do it yourself. Of course, you can have certain keywords on your website so that Google, you know, crawls through that and gets that information out. But you have to engage a professional and they're out there. You can engage somebody who does SEO for you. It's a process of improving the quality and quantity of traffic to a website from search engines. That is the definition of search engine optimization. Now, this is a very typical example. I search for Zomato. What is on top? Swiggy. Because they are more optimized. That's why Zomato shares are falling, although they are rising in the last four, five days. You know, look at this. Right? This is an example of search engine optimization. I look for the best ophthalmologist in Mumbai and who crops up, you may not even know. Try because he has optimized. Let's try. I can. I. I did try, but I don't. I don't want to show ophthalmologists here. That's why I gave the example of Zomato and Swiggy. I tried in the morning before I made the slides. Yeah. So, so this is search engine optimization. So you look for something, and something else pops up on top. 
because they have either optimized the sub search engines or they have invested very heavily on Google AdWords. Google AdWords is an advertisement based search optimization. Otherwise, you can do it as well. No website traffic can be driven organically. Organic website traffic driving is by blogging using social networks. Sorry, where did it go? Yeah, blogging using social networks, video services, email marketing, everything drives traffic to your website. But what is important is paid advertisement on Google. That's called Google AdWords. That will also drive people to your landing page. I won't go into the process of search engine optimization. They'll study your website first. They will give you adequate keywords, then build very good links to your website, which work consistently. They optimize your content and uh, provide what is required for the patient from the patient's perspective and submit site to the search engine. Make sure that it gets kind of optimized over a period of time and then you start popping up in the first 20 or 30 searches or in the first page when people search like this. When you search for Chinese restaurants in Mumbai, although there are, how much is that? 3 million results. I don't think there are 3 million Chinese restaurants <laughs> in Mumbai. But what tops is this? Do you know of this place, Kurish? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's fine. Great. It may be good, but there are other places which may not be as good as this look at this number of reviews 5.6 trillion that is and look at this 421 even this pops up china house second <laughs> right so that is the magic of optimization of course google reviews you, are, you have to request your satisfied patients for a google review you can't have a generic thing that every patient should leave a review for you but if somebody is very happy with you, says, Doctor, thank you, I am very impressed with your clinic or your, your services, then please, you invite them to leave a Google review for you. That will give you a very high scoring review. Otherwise, every Tom, Dick and Harry leaves a zero score for you, then your <laughs> scores go down very <laughs> drastically. Right? So this one has got, you know, people not just look at the score, but they also look at how many people have reviewed. Not one, two, ten. It should be in thousands at least. So it's very, very important. So in conclusion, I would say that if you want inorganic in growth in your patient volume, organic growth is what you build over time based on your professional capability and reputation. But if you want some something like a push or inorganic growth, which you want to kind of you want to take off very rapidly, then go for organized subscription services such as Practo. That's since I was given a topic including Practo, I'm just popping up that name. But such as Practo, use AdWord advertisements on Google which you can actually tailor to your budget. You can manage it yourself. So you can use, uh, you know, small little advertisements that come on Google when people search for it. Then engage somebody who would do a package for you, social media optimization and search engine optimization and drive rating from healthy patients on Google. That is the way people look for things now, so you have to be prepared for it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank Santosh. you, thank you, Dr. Santosh. Yeah, yeah. We'll take questions now. Before the I'll, next speaker, I'll, Dr. Harshul Thak will join us. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll request uh, Santosh Nava to tell us. You've been in LVP for a number of years. Right. You're now with Center of Side. Yes. Uh, in terms of social media, who do you think has a better recall power in Hyderabad as institution versus institution one? And secondly, how often do you find patients coming through social media sticking on with you? Because somebody who comes to social okay. media is, is also a very labile patient. He looks for social media and everything. So to convert them into per permanent patients sometimes can be a little tricky. That will be my experience. Yeah. You first know? question I'll answer first. Yeah. If we think that all the charitable organizations are charitable, they are charitable. They have very good objectives. They are very grounded, but they are highly corporatized. I, would, I have sat on the board of LVPI, I have sat on the board of Center for Sight. I feel LVPI is more corporate than Center for Sight. Right? Social media. Recall. Yeah, absolutely. So that drives their social media activity. There is a department in LVPI for social media activity. Not one person. There's a huge department. You look at their uh, YouTube posts. You look at their emails. Every day, 6 o'clock in the morning, you get four emails from LVPI. Every day and they track you and they change their headline if you don't open it so you get a different headline i get a different headline so everything is optimized every organization does it
maybe shankarne try a little less little more arvind little less little more they do, do it in different spheres but every organization does it so there is you know nobody who is not doing it it is just that private practitioners come into the radar institutions don't come into the radar that's it sometimes yes sometimes no yeah, yeah social perfect. media patients is stick to you depending on if they got what they wanted if they don't, don't get what they wanted they will again search yes sir one of the problem i feel of using google uh, review is there can be negative review from not even from a patient they are called google reviewer who might not have visited your place and just write a negative sort of review and sometimes the starring also people are not aware with what five was the difference between five star and four star they will write very good institute but give four star to that which drags the rating I down I so how to even one star as well so how to combat that there it's is there is no way to combat that you have to look for volumes then you know sometimes one or two reviews don't matter if there are thousand reviews one or two zero or one doesn't matter because because you know total score is calculated as an average so it really doesn't matter but if somebody has left a bad review see always it's a good idea to own up your you know organization so everything gets lifted uh, listed on re uh, google even if you don't want it it gets listed on google because somebody would have reviewed it right? i think uh, so it is always good to yeah. own up and register it so that okay. you get a feedback as to okay somebody has reviewed your uh, clinic and this is the score that you got then you call that patient up and discuss with him as to why did you leave a bad review for me what went wrong so you talk to him or her they sometimes withdraw their review or give you a higher rating all organizations do it but the phone number is not there in google review and no no phone number is not there phone number is not there but if it's your patient you can always talk or respond on google Absolutely. Sometimes the review is left by reviewers, not your patient. Yeah, yeah. So that, so that, see Google that. Points, they just no. go on random reviewing. No, no. So that happens with the unsatisfied patient. He will tell ten other people sometimes to write it for you, and that's happened to us also at time. And uh, the only way I've uh, investigated what can be done. One is, of course, to any unsatisfied patient, you reach out and uh, talk. And sometimes, as they said, if it's a genuine issue, it gets solved. But if it's not. Or it's a forged patient. You cannot do anything. So only solution is to drown them with good reviews. Mm. Uh, good reviews means what he said. If you have a satisfied patient, tell your staff to uh, kind of you know request them to give a review. So you'll have five more, which will drown that one. Other, I mean, you cannot remove that. There is no uh, policy within the government framework or uh, police framework to remove a Google review. Uh, I have a different take on this. You know, on the other side. And I say, why are you scared of negative reviews? Because I had a patient who happens to be the CEO of Google. And he said, Google research shows that, uh, you know, in the healthcare and education, patients do not have faith in a website or a Google review which does not have negative points. Because it's very important to have negative points. Nobody can keep a spouse happy all their life. You know, it's not possible. Similarly, a patient is like that. So if you have a negative review, it means you're genuine. If you don't have a negative review, then the whole thing is orchestrated. And I still remember the words I was once flying with Mr. The now Vice President of India. We're coming from Magarwal's conference and he was coming from another one, Chennai, Delhi. He made a statement to me which I never forgot. He said, every time the opposition criticizes the BJP, we go up two percentage in voting rights. <laughs> so it pays. Yeah. yeah, Jagdish. It's a Brecto topic, you know. Like Brecto, when it came into the market, like I, I subscribed to that. Then we realized, you know, they do all your billing, etc. Now, what the Brecto does is, that's why I'm just, is, you know, they, when somebody calls up, like a new patient calls up to the Brecto, and they want, let's say, they say, Dr. Jagdish, they will give you another 10 names. Yeah. So what, yeah. how do you tackle this issue? You know, the Brecto has become such a big organization, you know, they literally uh, uh, bargain with a patient and take, take, you, take away your patient because your database are with them. Yeah. Not only the uh, patient's telephone number, email, your billing also is with them. So they have really a big mammoth and I don't know how to solve that issue now. That's a, that's a issue. That, that is a yeah, Especially issue. the Precto. Yeah. 
any any solutions sir i uh, i realize that yes if you are very dependent on practo they do bully you they they start asking for you know that you do ads with them otherwise you list right at the bottom so it's very important to not be too dependent on practo or any or other any organization other. that's why like sir spoke about your own seo your own look your own search engine optimization you yourself using adwords you create your own brand so when somebody searches for you they find you through your website rather than through practo and now so many many aggregators have come to yeah. the market they yeah. all of them you know they do all your work yeah and, and they bully you to those absolutely. so so it's very important to not be too dependent on them that is the biggest issue Ag aggregators are a double edged weapon we are not discussing it here yeah yes 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 you can't stop it you you can't stop it Uh, what is uh, Tushar? What is the uh, average spend that you need to make to have a search engine optimization? Search engine optimization doesn't cost much, sir. You can spend about fifteen thousand a month, ten to fifteen thousand a month, and that's adequate. Okay. Uh, so now the, it's the, there are two kinds of SEOs now. One is to list your website on the first page of Google, and the other is called local SEO, where you see those Google Maps listings when somebody searches for say Best Eye Hospital near me. You'll see those Google Maps listing, like how Sir showed with Chinese restaurants. that is local seo which is showing on google maps so for that there is separate seo to be done so that's why reviews are important posts on google are important and citation building is important that and now the i believe google is uh, uh, now bringing the uh, all this uh, google business review thing to the maps yeah i think i last month got yeah, a right. newsletter so that from june or july the app and they've shifted yeah so they've stopped the app and they're shifting everything to the ma google maps only this And reviews will show up in the maps. No, I have only one worry: when Google collapses, what will happen to our practices? <laughs> <laughs> Then there'll be some other search engine that will be there. And also for Google reviews, what I found useful is that, like the counselors, the patient care coordinators, and anyways interacting with them, all you need is to get that link where somebody can click, and they'll find your Google review option. So they can click on it and just give you five stars. So if you, you, the counselor knows which patients are happy. The patient care coordinators who are in managing the OPD know which patients are happy. All they need to do is. Let's say how was your experience? I hope you're comfortable. Patient says yes, yes, I'm happy. Uh, it would be great if you could also please give us a yeah. Google review. Don't send random SMSs to all your patients yes. to oh, review. Yes. That's I a bad thing. Tell the patients to write a couple of lines. Yes, yeah. Patients. Patients. yes. Yeah. And that also improves your visibility because somebody has written, oh, this is the best doctor I know. Then when somebody searches for best doctor near me, that improves your visibility on Google as well. Number, I'm a little worried about the word best because we're all sitting in the hall. How many of you are best? Raise your hands. All Only of one. Two. But sir, on so search so engine, you can't be on Google. But sir, on search engine, okay, you have to see what patients are searching for. So those are the most common keywords. Best eye doctor near me. That is a common keyword. Most common. Yes, Mukesh. Yeah. For SEO, I can give you give you know there are twenty six keywords for SEO. Supposing I have stopped doing LASIK, I do all surface ablation. Still in my website, I have to look for, I have to find LASIK. Because anybody doing LASIK yeah. is not going to search for surface ablation. <laughs> yeah. So there are 26 keywords that one has to write it down in SEO. And number two, once you are looking for the business patient, because if you look at two at social media, all you are going to get is watering, itching, uh, headache kind of patients. At some stage, when you are looking for the business patient, like cataract, glaucoma, all those things. Then you have to divide yourself. How much you have to depend upon social media? Mm -hmm. What about the other social media? Instagram. Well, that Before you came in, we covered it. Covered <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> so atten attention span is short. So you, uh, the, we we don't repeat this. Uh, Instagram is gone. <laughs> Santosh, now you can reveal who's the best doctor. In the <laughs> yes. How is your, in your opinion, Jazz Dial is another search engine, but they normally don't bully you like Practo does. Uh, how how is that in your opinion? Uh, uh, Jugal has had some experience with Jazz Dial. Yeah. I can I can tell you about Jazz Dial. Yeah. Uh, the executive came to me and said that doctor, how do you get your patients? He asked me very beautifully. I said, well, patients brings patients. My relatives and. Okay, you are waiting for the patient, isn't it? I said yes. So, and here the patient is searching for you. Here you are going to get it. So, uh, then I, uh, you know, they literally uh, auction your pin codes. 
with platinum this and I have a very healthy experience so far as just dial is concerned. If I see today's my email, I must have got at least about 25 just dial. How much benefit? Even 10 percent it comes, it's beneficial to you. Yeah. So I as as Jagdish said, it's it's not cheap. Just dial is not cheap. But if you want cheap. to be if you want to be amongst the top three uh, ranked, then you have to pay so much. If you want to be in the top five, top ten, because then nobody really scrolls down to the ninth number there. So for everything they will say for LASIK, you want, we'll put you in the top three or we'll have you as the only person in your PIN code area. So they have lots of such packages and before your package is over, they've come out with a new package uh, for you. So you just have to keep on. So at some point you need to balance. And if you, if yeah, and if you show, for example, uh, just now recently I told them that um, uh, I'm not interested. So if, 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 you, if you show disinterest, they come little more aggressively. I said, I'm 65, I'm going to retire in six months' time. Why would I want a five-year package from you? So, so that, that hit them, then they got some senior people to come and talk to me. I mean, short of telling me don't retire, which I had no plans of doing. <laughs> but I, I, I got the package substantially re reduced because I said, for six months, you're giving me a five-year package. So I'm going to retire in six months. So he says, okay, so you retire in six months, but you take the five-year, your name will still be there. You know, that sort of thing. So. It, you, you, you need to uh, bargain with them. If you show interest, if you show that you are very keen, the price goes up. And it's all dynamic. It's fixed by 25-year-olds and 30-year-olds who fix your uh, packages there for you. So just so to give, just any to give any background to what tax? Kuresh was saying, uh, I happen to know the people who founded Just Dial. They live in my colony, Mr. Krishnan. They were running in losses for seven years. They built up a loss of 1,100 crores. Last year, you must have read in November, they, was, they were bought over by Reliance. Reliance. And uh, Reliance also has not transferred the money because they found that the data was not accurate. So even the Just Dial people have problems, and they are also search engineering to see what is happening. <laughs> uh, how, can you, anybody, uh, how much the tax benefit you get in the social media, how much you can take best out of it? Tax, tax benefits. benefits? I have no, no. no. Do you get tax benefits if you advertise on social media? Yeah, so all that expenses. Yeah, any expenses, expenses marketing yeah, expenses, yeah, it's, it's tax benefit. It but that is only if you are making profit to pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a fact. If you see the balance sheet of all the leading hospital chains in the world, not a single chain, excluding Apollo in India, is showing a profit in the balance sheet. They are only working on valuation. Am I right, Dr. Santosh Anavar? All the balance sheets except for charitable hospitals are in the red. So the question today is, you don't have to make a profit. You got to confuse the investor to say you got a value. Uh, any other questions? We are uh, actually waiting for Harshul said he'll be here at 10. So in a couple of minutes, we'll have uh, Harshul uh, coming in and speaking. We can talk live from the car. From? <laughs> Harshul can give live from the car. From, from the LBO or something. <laughs> Yeah, so um, uh, there is there is uh, uh, some some things which we haven't uh, talked about. What is Pinterest? What is? My daughter told me about this, and I haven't really explored this. You know anything about it, Tushar? I am not on it, but Pinterest is basically a collection of ideas that it put, that puts out. You know, so suppose you search for a particular thing, it'll show you a collection of places where there is something about it. It's, it's sort of. Yeah, you can. That. I think uh, I also know it from my daughter. Earlier, so I don't use it, but. <laughs> It's got these very uh, elegant quotes and you can, you know, if you're thinking of something and you put it on the search, it'll give you an elegant quote with some good backdrop with and similar things of thousands of similar things. So it, it's already designed, made for you to use it, post it uh, and then connect to a network. So, okay. but I've not used it practically. No, but uh, what he said, I want to add to it, you know, we are going into so much of social media. I just want to bring up, my, I come from a generation of doctors, my parents were doctors. Nothing works in medical practice except the doctor-patient relationship. All these sterile methods of finding a patient work up to a point. If the patient does not connect with you emotionally, if he does not believe in your treatment, nothing is going to happen. You'll be surprised that there are people outside in Ayurveda, homeopathy, who have better control of the patient than we have. Because we are treating the disease, they are treating the human being. So doctors are gradually losing the golden touch of how to handle a human being. They're all into <coughs> procedures. They're all into how many procedures we can do. Because that is how you get the, uh, the returns on the investment. And that is what is teasing off the patients. Because they actually feel they're being over-investigated. I mean, can you imagine there's a hospital in Delhi 
that gives you a package for two eyes, even if the other eye doesn't have a cataract, because they say one day you'll have it. So today take the 10% discount. I mean, they're doing it openly. And that shows the level to which we have come. And that is what is cheesing off the patient, that I, does the patient need the doctor or does the doctor need the patient? That is the critical question. I don't think, I mean, from a Harshal. ethical perspective, it's a good idea for us to talk about discounts or go ahead. Hmm. Or when people say that we'll do a free consultation of on this whatever. So yeah, 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 yeah. These are aggregators which are which are like bad apples in the group. There, here to stay, we need to find out ways to get around them. Some city organizations have banned them, have told their doctors not to join them. It's having mixed results. Only time will tell. There's a lot of money invested. They've got brand ambassadors like Rahul Dravid and others to advertise for them. So I don't know. I, I just feel that they will go away and die down with time, maybe at four or five years. But in that time, it will affect our practice. So we need to be a little more united and, and deny this. Because what is happening is we need to tell our patients that there is no person that you are, you know, when you go to a pristine eye care, for example, they will get your cataract done and come out. But at the end of it, if something goes wrong, you will not be able to find the doctor to, to catch or whatever. Here, you are putting your reputation on the line when you, if Jugal Chai is operating you and something goes wrong, you go back to Jugal Chai and set it right. So you are there. But here, they are using empty uh, slots in a nursing home. Uh, to get the cataract done by anonymous doctors. Something like what Vasan used to do <laughs> earlier, when they never encouraged you to know who the doctor in Vasan Eye Care was, you just went to Vasan, got a cataract and came back. It was fine when it was going fine, but if there's a complication, you don't know whom to catch. So patients will cotton to, onto that. It'll take some time. But how does it work? The patient is picked up from home. Limousine service, yeah. Free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I think. It's fine. It's fine when the going is good. But if, if the patient tomorrow has a problem and wants to know whom to catch, that aggregator will move out of the way. He is not responsible. There's a contract which has been signed between you, the doctor, and the doctor says, "I never saw you before." So it's somebody has seen the patient, and somebody else is operating.